And today is February 12th, 2019. Um, <clears throat> this is a love story, and it's a love story about what I love. In 1976, Dorothy Hamill won the 19 or won the women's figure skating championships in Innsbruck, Austria. She was America's sweetheart, had the haircut, the Hamill Camel, everybody loved her. And at that time, many girls started skating in America, in the US. One of them was my sister. She skated up in Minnesota and uh, performed. Uh, one year she had done a ice skating show and I was fortunate enough to watch it. I was enthralled, I loved it. There were the costumes, the lights, the patterns. I thought it was awesome. I got my first pair of ice skates and then got on the ice, went through, learned a skate program, got into private lessons, and ended up ice dancing. And ice dancing was awesome for me. Didn't have to jump because I didn't really like that. Um, and the patterns were consistent and I like that. Now in figure skating there's quite a ratio of boys to girls. About one guy to every 50 girls. In ice dancing it's even heavier. One to a couple hundred maybe. So since I was the guy that ice danced, I was pretty popular. Uh, I would be the partner for many girls in our club and clubs around the area. And eventually I was the testing partner. Uh, when an individual moves from one level to the other, they go through proficiency tests and um, advance from one level to the other. In order to do that, you do one piece of the, you do one dance alone by yourself in a solo, and then you go with a partner. And I was the partner. Most of these girls had never skated with a partner ever, and I was brought in usually a couple days before to skate with them. That way, they could get used to me. I could get used to them. There were girls who were six years of age girls that were 60 years of age, tall girls, little girls, heavy and light, all sorts of shapes and sizes. I had a great time skating with them. The patterns were all consistent, but each girl was different. And I liked that challenge. I liked that variety. I had a good time understanding where they were needed to go. I was a great teacher and they liked me. So I had a good time with that. After a while, I and then moved on to competing, and I got my own partner. That was Tanya. Tanya and I skated together for about four years in Colorado. We competed around the country, um, did local and national competitions, and um, did pretty well, pretty well. After competing, then you turn professional, and you can either teach or you can perform. I taught for a while, uh, but I still like to perform. I still had something in me. Tried out for ice capes, didn't go very well. And then in, I was living in Minneapolis at the time and there was a show coming to town. They were looking for a couple of local kids. I was all in for that one. <clears throat> Tried out and realized, eh, I'm probably not gonna get in. I'm not very good, other kids are better. But I got a call a little bit, a little bit later that I'm in. And I got <clears throat> flown out to Colorado or California and trained in California for a few weeks before the show went on. And this happened to be Dorothy Hamill's Nutcracker on Ice. Dorothy introduced me to skating, and now she's introducing me to performing as well. She was everything I thought she would be. She was sweet, she was nice, she was kind, she was beautiful, wonderful mentor. Had a great time in her show. And there was one episode where, I, I think this happened, but I, I'm not sure. I imagine her looking at my butt and going, <gasps> Boys, take them shopping. I had to learn how to wear the proper undergarments that I never wore before. <clears throat> so I was taken shopping in Minnesota by, by some of the other men in the troop. Um, after that show, I did several other professional shows and then taught for more years and then ran my own club and did my own shows there too. <coughs> while we were, while my wife and I were Actually, I actually met my wife as well through skating, too. And we ended up in San Antonio and working at a club in San Antonio at an ice skating show, or ice skating rink. And there was a troop that was heading through town, and I heard my name, 
and asked, do they have some ice time? And I turned over and there was Dorothy. If you're looking for a little bit of ice time in San Antonio, I was more than happy to accommodate her. She'd done so much for me. What a sweetheart. Ice skating is something that I love. There's a certain smell about the rink when you go into it. At, uh, with the Each Zamboni is run on uh, li liquid gas or liquid propane. And there's a certain smell that's in a rink. Uh, the ice has a certain smell to it, <clears throat> a certain um, humidity in the air, that coldness, that coolness. And when you get on the ice, that flowing around, that speed, is wonderful to feel. Movement of side to side, going forwards, backwards, or fast or slow. And having a good partner by your side, that click when you move from one blade to the other is just magical. I also like the, the sound when you're in there. The rinks are pretty much concrete or steel and there's no sound absorption, so there's a wonderful echo that you can hear when your blade hits the ground, when you talk, as you move, you can hear the sound follow you. Sometimes if you're just right in a corner, you can hear a nice echo, hear your voice, or hear your own self. I really like to ice skate. As I get older, it gets harder to do it, but still it's magical being out there with the sights, the sound, the smells. I like ice skating. And Dorothy, thank you for introducing me to skating in general, to professional life, and just being all around a nice individual.